Thousands of tired, nerve-shaken, over-civilized people are beginning to find out that going to the mountains is going home, that wildness is a necessity. Those are the words of John Muir, AKA John of the Mountains, AKA father of the national parks. It's a nice quote, but our national parks haven't traditionally been a home for everyone. Like most other American institutions, the National Park Service has a pretty checkered history with race. Madison Grant, a man who helped inspire the National Parks movement, and also one of the 20th century's most influential conservationists, was a eugenicist who wrote a book that Hitler referred to as his Bible. Just this past March, Senate Democrats began investigating alleged racially motivated reassignments of top officials of color within the Department of Interior, which oversees the Park Service. Reportedly, its head, Ryan Zinke, told employees that diversity isn't important. Meanwhile, the department announced a small fee hike for national parks, after an initial plan to triple entry fees drew sharp criticism. Many Americans voiced concerns that a hike would only widen the equity gap in these wild places, where diversity among visitors is already so low. There are, however, lots of folks working to make national parks accessible to everyone. Gris joined Jose Gonzalez and his group Latino Outdoors at Mount Rainier National Park to hear more about how they're trying to change that. Do you guys normally come out here? <laughs> no, this is my first time here. Jose began Latino Outdoors with a vision of building community. I feel this identity and connection. Where is everybody else hanging out? We need to understand that because different communities of different backgrounds have had different equity gaps, what's normative for you and easy to access because of your privilege, it's not the starting point for a lot of the communities. We tend to talk a lot about equality and having access for everybody, the outdoors don't judge you, like all of that. That's the conservation table that we all want to sit around. That's the vision. To make outings more affordable, Latino Outdoors covers all transportation, entry fees, and the necessary gear. This is a big deal because cost can quickly become a barrier. While groups like Latino Outdoors are bringing new people into the parks, they're still aware of the conservation movement's troubling history. On land used by the sheep eater, Shoshone, Crow, and other Indian tribes, Yellowstone became the first national park in 1872. Tensions between tribes and white settlers led to a significant military presence on Yellowstone grounds. For the first 10 years of the park's existence, it operated more like a military fort. This was on the heels of the 1830 Indian Removal Act, which allowed the federal government to acquire southern Indian land in exchange for moving west to the Mississippi. This included native homes, burial sites, and sacred land. Well, what is really sad about the federal government is the fact that they do not recognize that every square inch of land that they're holding on to through their National Park Service was land that was ceded to them by one tribe or many tribes. Under Jim Crow, Park Service recreational facilities and areas were either largely segregated or non-existent for people of color. Those that were available were often poorly maintained. They were really designed for people who had the financial resources and the leisure time to visit them. And that didn't include us. This generally meant middle and upper class whites. For many African Americans, the wilderness also called back to sites of trauma. When you look at the woods historically, these were places where lynchings took place and escape routes for African Americans. Culturally, some older generations of African Americans express how the outdoors might be dirty and might not have been too far removed from the living conditions of the poor and working class. Black families who did attempt to camp and road trip in those days often faced hostility and violence. So much so that Victor Hugo Green published an annual guidebook for black road trippers from 1936 until 1966, the year after Jim Crow ended. Today, many people of color still feel unwelcome in outdoor spaces like national parks, whether through mistreatment by unfriendly fellow visitors or lack of diversity among park rangers, neither of which convey a sense of belonging. In recent years, the National Park Service has committed to increasing employee and visitor diversity, which President Obama helped along. And the agency also has various sites dedicated to African, Asian, Latino, and Native American heritage. People of color have means, and if we don't see value in these national parks, then we're not going to spend our money there. Representation of visibility in the outdoors sends a message that conservation actually is a viable career path for more Americans. With demographics quickly shifting, the conservation movement needs people of color to sustain it. To honestly say that these are public lands, that means public at large, it's going to continue to shift and change. So responsibility for communities of color is knowing that we need to take care of these spaces. 